Hey, it's Ryan with SMB, and today we're going to be installing our new Mega Cab tank. Uh, this is going to fit all your Mega Cab trucks. Uh, included here will be the instruction card, and this will have a QR code on it. You can scan this QR code, and it'll take you to the written copy of the instructions uh, if you don't want to follow along on this video, or is just an additional resource. So we're going to jump underneath the truck here and get started. The first step is we're going to go ahead and remove the hose clamps on the filler neck and the uh, fill vent here. So to do so, we're going to either use a 5 16 socket or a flathead screwdriver. Um, and you can see the head on the hose clamps right here. So this one we already had a little loose, so just back that all the way off. And then on the other side, it will be loose as well. Once those are loose, you can slide the hose clamps up and off. These hoses can be a little bit of a pain to get off, so we're just going to wait until the tank's on the way down a little bit, uh, and that's going to give us some more room to get our hand in there and pop the two filler neck and fill vent off the metal. So now we're going to move over to the strap bolts and fuel lines. So I've already popped this off a little bit, but what you're going to do is remove the blue safety clip, and then there's going to be a tab. This one's already off, but I'll show you the tab here. We'll be on the other side from that safety clip and you'll press in on this tab to remove this from the nipple here. Sometimes this tab will be facing the second line that's in front. Uh, and so you can remove this line too to get access, but this is the only one that needs to come off uh, on the fuel filter side. And then there's a second line on the sending unit side as well as an electrical connection that need to be removed. And we'll show you those in a little more detail once we have the tank dropped a little bit. And if you have a third gen mega cab, uh, both fuel lines will be disconnected at the sending unit instead of doing one on the fuel filter and one on the sending unit like this fourth and fifth gen trucks have. Um, so just keep that in mind. We'll show you that sending unit more in detail once the tank's on the way down. We're going to go ahead with the jack underneath now. Uh, we can start removing the fuel tank bolts uh, for the straps. There's going to be a front strap and a rear strap. Both are going to be 16 millimeters. So we'll just get these backed out of here now. Sometimes this bolt will remove the whole stud with it. Uh, if this happens to you, this is just a seven millimeter socket. Um, it could go on this end, and then you can use a 16 millimeter wrench and uh, spin the bolt off. It makes it a lot easier on reinstallation if the stud's already in there in place, and then you don't have to line the strap and the, the hole up together. You can just push the strap over the stud. So. And this one came out too, I think. The strap removed, uh, we can push it up and over the clasp on the uh, frame rail side here. Do the same thing on the front, except it goes the other way. So we dropped the tank an inch or two. At this point, if you have any remaining lines on top of the sending unit, make sure you get those off in your electrical connector. Um, and then we're gonna go on the, over the top of the tank here and pop off our filler neck and fill vent. I dropped the tank out of the truck. You can better see that other fuel line connector right here. Uh, so this will be the one on the frame rail side that's going to have to get removed at the tank. All you're going to do is just squeeze in on the two tabs here and remove that, and then the electrical uh, has been removed from here. And for that, it's just a red locking tab that gets kicked over, and then they depress the tab, and it comes right out. So with that all done, we can go ahead and get the locking ring removed. Uh, we have a locking ring removal tool, but you can also just use a, uh, like a flathead or a pry bar with a mallet. We can begin transferring over the sending unit now. Your SMB tank's gonna ship with the new O-ring. This must be used. So we're gonna set this down in the O-ring groove there and then remove the sending unit. Pour out some of that fuel so we don't make a mess. And then make sure to point the tab on the sending unit towards the arrow 
on the tank. And now there's two arrows on this tank, one for 13 and up trucks uh, and one for 05 to 2012 trucks here. So this, since this is a 2019 and up, we're gonna go and use the 2013 and up tab. Drop this in right here. Your SMB tank's also going to include a new locking ring. Uh, you must use this new locking ring, so we're just going to slide this over. Make sure the setting unit's on top of that O-ring nicely. Just drop that in, and then... Get that started. The process is exactly the opposite of before. So we will come in here. We can go ahead and transfer over our hose clamps now. And our filler neck tube. And remember how this was facing. We'll install it the same way on the SMB tank. I've removed the filler neck. Now I'm going to go ahead and press our check valve in. Make sure the flow arrow is pointing towards the tank. And we'll use the tank itself to install this here. So the white line is going to face directly up. We'll go all the way on. We're going to make sure to get the snug. It doesn't need to be crazy tight so that it collapses the tank. But uh, if it's loose, it'll leak as well. We can now remove the hose clamp on the factory fill vent. Remove this. We're just going to take this hose clamp off. We won't be reusing this. Um, what we're able to do now is we provide a new fill vent here. This is just a, this hose is extra long. And this is going to make installation really simple. What we recommend doing is installing this end first onto the truck um, and removing this before the, we install the tank. And then what we'll do is once the tank's up in the truck, we're gonna cut this to length and push it on here. Cause this side's really easy to access uh, once the tank's up in the truck. However, this side is not. So I'm gonna pull this off right now. Sometimes you have to cut these with a little razor knife, uh, make a saw slit just to get it off here. Uh, we just do this for shipping. So now we can go ahead and push our new fill line on to the filler neck vent here. This will be easiest with one hand on each side of the frame rail. There it goes. Next, we're going to slide over the U-bolt for the front mounting support. Uh, it's going to be about 12 inches behind the def tank, uh, which coincides on this truck frame with a bump right here. So we're going to slide it up and over the frame rail uh, and make sure it will have plenty of clearance around the, your fuel and brake lines. And then there's going to be a hanger that installs up over here that holds the front of the tank. We've started raising the fuel tank up. Uh, we're going to make sure that the filler neck goes over the rear uh, cross member here as well as the rear uh, rollover vent line that comes from the fuel tank. We're going to grab the front rollover vent line here as well and route that uh, up and out with the fill level vent. And then just make sure this is coming right over and uh, we're going to keep going up with the tank. We can go ahead and connect our electrical and fuel lines. Uh, just basically press snap, fit them back on, and then the, uh, the rear one will need that blue locking clip snapped back into place. On the fuel filter side, we'll go ahead and grab that electrical too. We do include a uh, extension harness if it's a little tight on your truck. 
to get that electrical connector on. We're gonna go ahead and trim the uh, fill level vent now. We're just gonna eyeball this, but make sure we cut it short enough so that there's no dips in the hose. We'll replace the hose clamp on top here. Slide that back and slide this onto the barb. Now I'm going to take the longer snap and uh, go ahead and snap it in on the frame side. And then on this drive line side, we'll just press it up and over the mounting stud here and start the nut. With that started, we can start tightening on the rear of the tank. We're going to move to the front of the tank next and do the front hook support. Uh, we have included two front hooks, one with the clearance here, one with the clearance removed. Uh, the way to tell which one you need is if your frame has the bump, the protrusion right here, like this truck does. Um, so we're just going to line this up, push this through, and then we can get our 19 millimeter nuts started here. We're now going to come in and install the middle strap, and it's the same thing, we're just going to press up on it until it clicks into the frame tab here. If it doesn't want to click in, you can bend this side out a little bit. That's going to give you a little more leeway to get this thing into the frame tab. We got our middle strap now uh, snapped in on the frame rail side and we're tightening it up here on the driveline side. Uh, once this straps up, we're going to go ahead and drop the truck down, get diesel transferred over into this and we are good to go. We've gone ahead and gotten our hose clamp tight on our filler neck here as well as pulled our two uh, roller vent valves out and then I'm going to take zip ties up and zip tie these to the filler neck and the filler neck vent. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions during the install, give us a call at 909-947-0015. Thank you.